Hey guys, how's it going today? And today we're going to be building a box spring for this bed. So the thing is, is I didn't want to go and spend the $300 on the box spring because one, they usually stick out of the bed frame, which always annoys me. You do have low profile options now, but even then, uh, I think that for me, it was like 275 or something like that, or 300 bucks for a low profile. Basically, all you got to do if you want to keep your bed low profile, in this case, we want it to come just underneath there, no more really than the gaps that are up here. So I've got to build and support this because if you take a look here, see that flex? I kind of want to make that more sturdy. And to make that more sturdy, I'm going to have to put something stronger on there. So my plan is, since I need to eat up the space about three and a half to four inches, I'm gonna throw two by fours across here and I'm gonna cut them at five feet, which is 60 inches, which is what a box spring or a mattress is, is 60 inches. So we'll cut that at 60 inches. And then on top of that, we're gonna make our own slats to go across here, which we're gonna make out of two by sixes and they're gonna be cut at, I've measured for this bed and it's 81. So 81 across, technically it's 61 wide, but I want to keep it sucked in a little bit. So that way, if somebody looks down the side of the mattress, they aren't going to see my two by four. So we're keeping those sucked in just a little bit. But other than that, let's get to this. First thing we're going to need are, if you count here, we could do two two by tens and a two by eight for this one, which we'll cut down. These will cut in half. That one we will cut at 60 inches. Then we're gonna need six two by sixes cut at 61. So if you take two two by sixes, might as well do these two at a time. Make sure they're flush with your finger. Then you're gonna measure them down to 81. After they get to 81, which is right there, you can use a, you can either measure both sides and then just connect the line. I usually just do this side because I'm gonna, when I put my saw up there, I'm not even gonna see it. And then make sure that your saw blade is on this side of the line so that way, that's the waste side. In case you're wondering why I put one piece of wood on top of the other, take this piece underneath, grab this one. Look at that, we got our next one cut. This is only accurate for probably the first two or three cuts. I'll leave it up to you if you want to continue to do it. Remeasure it now and then though. So now for the other ones, we have our 10 footers right here. What we're gonna do is chop them both. So all you do is I put them up next to each other. They both came to be 10 and a half plus an eighth that looked like. So what we're gonna do is just go a little bit over 60 maybe even 60 and an eighth and then that'll cut these exactly in half and so that's what i'm going to do make sure you measure them if they're right at 10 feet just cut them right at uh, 60 inches and try to cut it as close on the line and then just split the difference if you want to line it up that way but all we're going to do is go right here i've actually measured to both sides and i can see right i want to just try and line my saw blade right up down that center and they're both basically the exact same size. So we'll do that, then I'll grab one of them, mark it out onto the uh, remaining eight footer I have, and then we can take it all upstairs to put it all up together. Now that we have our five cut two by fours and our six cut two by sixes, we're gonna bring those upstairs. I still have to measure this out a little better, but that's basically what it's gonna look like. We've got a whole whack load of the two by fours across those braces, reinforcing them. And then on top there, we have our two by sixes. I'm gonna, of course, first nail down the first two. So they're at the edges. And again, I want them in just a little bit from the edge. So it'll sit like that. And it'll it's already wider than the mattress. I'm not too worried. And then from there, I'm gonna decide if I wanna throw plywood on top. And if I do, I will show you that too. Do your two edge pieces first. After you do that, what you're going to have is 
49 and a half for me. Then you're going to measure this board. For mine, they're five and a half each. So I'm going to add five and a half times four boards, which equals 22. 49 and a half minus 22. Take that number. Once you get that number, how many spaces do we have? One, two, three, four, five. All right. So divide that remaining number by five, and then you'll have the distance for your spaces, which just so happens to be five and a half. So leave five and a half inches, take a screw. What I did, screwed in, except for this one, or maybe I did. Either way, what you're gonna do is screw in every single one of these ones. After you've screwed in all of these boards on this one and that one to every single board, these ones you don't need to do that to. You're just gonna do the second one and the second one on that side. So that way, you only need two screws per board because the weight of the mattress is going to hold it down anyway. And the only thing we're doing is making sure that these don't shift. So after we do that, I'll show you. So this is my end result. I'd feel, feel pretty confident to put a mattress on here, but I think what I'm going to end up doing just because I did buy one of those Tentrapedic mattresses with the, uh, I think it's got like a thousand coils, mini coil mattress on the bottom. So it absorbs, um, just so all the coils are being used and all the other fun stuff. I think in this case, since it's not just gel foam, I'm going to put plywood on here. So this isn't hard. All I'm going to do is throw a layer of plywood on. So measure the distance, which we already know is about 60 by 80 and that would fit that mattress if you want to if you measure this and it's 61 opening I would probably just do 60 and a half by 80 and a half and you should be set so let's go cut some plywood so I got two sheets of plywood right here all I did is I measured from there to here put our line here at 61 that's what I ended up doing 61 up here 61 up there 61 took a two by four put it across marked our line now i could just cut these and then make one of these do the last little bit that's left instead why not just cut the whole two pieces so they're the exact same so if we take a look here all i've done is this way 61 and then up i did 40 and a half from here I put a line in the center from here, put a line in the center from here, put a line in the center. Now that I've got this mapped out, now I'll have two equal spaces. Again, that's just me being OCD. Next thing you're going to do is square up your two sheets of plywood. Make sure they're nice and square. If you want, you can even clamp them. And then what you're going to do is just run your saw. Make sure the blade's on this side of the line. This is our waist side. And then... That's our waist side up there. So cut, cut, take these two upstairs and let's go screw them on. Well, there you go. This is it done. Again, I'm not, I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit. It's a little cockeyed in there, but that's just because I suck at cutting still. But it still looks good. Again, if you wanna also, if you're worried about this corner showing, if you're gonna be using uh, sheets or you could just go black, one thing you could do is around the whole rim, get a $5 tester paint from Home Depot and just roll the edge in black. Odorless. Get the odorless one. That way it doesn't stink. But yeah, just roll it in black and you'll never even know. Now, another thing some people do, again, up to you, they'll actually use an odorless paint or they'll take a black bed sheet and they'll wrap a black bed sheet around the entire mattress here or not mattress but our supposed box spring but they'll wrap it around the plywood wrap it nice and tight and throw your four screws in or eight screws if you want one two three four one two three four but do it more inward and it'll hold both the black um mattress cover and It'll hold the plywood down. 
I mean, the disadvantage is if you screw this down, you won't be able to clean it. But at the same time, if you're not getting it dirty, you won't have to clean it anyway. That's why some people just do the painting ish way because then you just do it that way. The other thing you could do is if you're really worried about the plywood showing, just cut it a little shorter. But to tell you the truth, once you put your mattress protector on, which I highly suggest you do, if you're buying a new bed and you do that, usually they'll extend the warranty if you do. Next thing you should also make sure you have is, um, of course, your sheet. And then your sheet will cover it. And then by the time you put your blanket on too, there is no way you're going to see that wood. But this all comes down to what you'd like. I'm just gonna throw four screws in the corners. Doesn't really matter where because I have so much wood down there. But that's all there is for this video. I sure hope this helped you out. I'm gonna throw the mattress on and that's how this will end. So you know with a box spring when you hop on and sometimes it creaks? No creaking, no nothing, because everything is screwed down on this bed. The cool thing is, is about making your own box spring, is it adds so much to the strength, too, of the bed. So I will give mad props to already the forged bed set, which I purchased, but adding that in there is crazy. And I dare you to try and lift or move this bed after you make that box spring. It is so heavy, but so sturdy. Like you could jump up and down on it. Not that I suggest jumping up and down on the bed because that's how the little monkeys fell off and bonked their heads. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Press like if you like the video and subscribe for more.